What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. Welcome back to NRS Bends the Knee series. What are we on now? Part 8? Part 9? Anyway, I just watched the release trailer for the second time for the MK12 Combat Pack 2, and I just want to say, what in the fucking world, Netherrealm? Like, are you kidding me? Are you seriously kidding me? I have a lot of strong opinions on this, and I'm going to try to keep it as, you know, PG rated as I can. Also, I want to say real quick, you know, warning, there's no script to this, just going to be, you know, kind of free flowing and off the cuff. So I will try to be as, you know, absolutely concise and not totally all over the place with my arguments and the point that I'm trying to take, but just what in the world? So, first off, let's just get the elephant out of the room, right out of the way. Um, well, you know what, we'll get there in a minute. So, for those that may or may not know, in MK12's Combat Pack 2, you have the return of animalities. Okay, cool. That seems pretty awesome. You have a new story DLC, which is supposed to take place after the events of Aftermath. And this time, Havoc or some super new version of him is supposed to be the big bad, is, you know, unleashing, unleashing, excuse me, total anarchy on everyone. So you have new story. Like I said, we have Havoc is now as the big bad. I still miss the days of, you know, Shao Kahn being the big bad, but oh well, hey, what can you do? And then we have six new characters. Three MK characters and three guest characters. It's like, we need three guest characters? That seems a little ridiculous. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. So we have Noob Saibot. Okay, in my opinion, Noob Saibot should have been, you know, base roster of the original Mortal Kombat game. We have gender swap versions of, I hate to even call them Sector and Cyrax. I'll get to them in a moment. We have Conan the Barbarian. Someone seriously loves Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, because again, he returns. The T-1000, with its likeness from the original Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And then Ghostface from the Scream films. Which I looked up. Scream 6, the last Scream movie, Scream movie to be released, was March 23rd, or excuse me, March of 2023. Why the hell are we getting Ghostface now? Am I missing something and there's a new, uh, you know, Scream movie coming out? Did I, we suddenly warp back a year? Like, what the heck in the world is going on? Ghostface? Of all people, Ghostface? Freddy Krueger again from, you know, redone a version of him from MK9 would have been better off. Heck, Ash from the Evil Dead series, Pennywise, Mike Myers, but Ghostface? It's literally a dude with a mask and a black cloth. And what's his power? Scaring people and using a mask? Like, how lazy can you be? Like, what the heck's he gonna do? I mean, if you wanted a guy with a knife, why not just use a friggin', uh, you know, Kano? You know, Kano would have been a better ver version, which, who is a cameo, so, I mean, like, you know, it's just stupid. There we go, we're gonna turn Sindel into a baby. Now, they did gender swap Sector and Cyrax, which just has me all kinds of ticked off. Like, just why? What in the world were you thinking? And to make it worse, well, hold on. So, one of the voice lines that Sector uses is, Oh, she drops down in a fight and says, Oh, let a real warrior handle this. Like, are you kidding? What, is Sector a freaking Power Ranger now? I mean, this whole thing just has me scratching my head. So, let me read what the original Lin Kuei, and this is from Mortal Kombat Wiki, is from. Somewhere in the north northernmost part of Asia, there exists a secret clan of assassins. We might have to pause here. 
Secret clan of assassins, thieves known as the Lin Kuei. This group has existed for centuries. Okay, good. There we go. That's why I read this. This group has existed for centuries and thrives on the evil intention of the people who pay for their services. Its warriors are chosen at birth to be raised apart from working working of days to day civilization are stripped of their former lives. Only the clan knows of their existence. Each of them possesses certain skills and abilities that set them apart from normal men. These abilities are passed on from generation to generation and honed through the experience of life. Certain Lin Kuei warriors possess supernatural abilities, including those that commune with nature. They have two rivalries from uh, the Tengu clan and the Snow Ninja. They're earliest incarnation is of course from Mortal Kombat Mythologies where the original Sub-Zero was a Lin Kuei clansman and of course he goes through a whole entire character arc and then later on fast forward he gets hired by Shang by some people to kill Shang Tsung so this whole concept of oh you know you know Lin Kuei warriors having you know emotion and feeling and you know everything else that was never the case there was never any emotion they were you know they were assassins but now like you've literally demigrated them into you know pretty much you know Power Rangers uh you know Tony Stark in an Iron Man suit oh by the way an air animality real quick here yeah I just the voice acting for them. I mean, it literally sounds like it's straight out of, you know, Marvel Cinematic, you know, Avengers Infinity War or Endgame, you know, Wakanda Warriors. I mean, it's just like, cringe like crazy. And before anyone says like, oh, they wanted to have some more female characters. Okay, just off the cuff. Let's think of a couple female characters that they could have easily done in this game. Let's see. Jade. Serena. Kira, Sonya, uh, how about some DC villains? Corrupted Power Girl, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy. I mean, there's just so many that they could have done and just had absolute, but instead, no, we have to get some version. God, I hate to even call them Sector and Cyrax. Of you know the former and my biggest issue with this is as a lifelong fan there's already established canon and lore for these characters I mean Sector and Cyrax already exist in the game as cameos Oof, and I'm getting my butt kicked by Jax here so what now we're gonna have you know, two versions of them in this game like what are they gonna be now Wakanda warriors that are, you know, fighting on the side of truth, justice, and the American way? Like, on the side of Wakanda? I mean, just, but it's bigger than this. It's clear that, you know, and NetherRealm Studios has just gone full, completely DEI rainbow agenda. Somewhere, someone at NetherRealm or their backers has said, you know what? We need to force as much diversity, equity, and inclusion into this game. And I have a big problem with that because, you know what, as much as they force it down our throats in the game and the character choices that they put into the game, they themselves did not adhere to that. You want to know why I say that? Well, I'll give some credit. Ed Boon, at least, is Hispanic. He is, I believe, uh, of Mexican descent. But, you watch the combat cast, for instance, that's all three white men on the combat cast. If you look up the heads of Warner Discovery Media, his name is David Hadan. The head of Warner Discovery Group, David Zaslov. And guess what? Both of these individuals are very rich white men with majors in business so you know to be at a high level in these businesses where's your diversity inclusion and equity why don't you have a you know chinese woman or a filipino or you know something you know any number of things 
I mean, it's just being divisive for divisive sake. I mean, you know, bad enough that we get it within all of our pop culture. So, you know, hey, Netherrealm, why don't you practice what you preach? Okay, maybe you have some people at the lower level that are, you know, of this, you know, DEI, but not at the highest level, not at the high level of, you know, Warner and its various conglomerates. But the sad part is I don't even think this really falls on Warner Media Games or Warner Discovery. I think it actually goes much, much higher to their mutual fund slash hedge fund groups. In case you don't know, AT&T owns Warner Media and the main mutual fund holding for AT&T and also coincidentally Warner is Vanguard. I guess we're just going to get this random. So, I mean, it's like, you know, why continue to just be so divisive? And then to sit there and just completely spit in the face and say, oh, okay, we're just going to wreck the entirety of the canon of the, you know, Lin Kuei. No, they're not going to be Lin Kuei warriors anymore. They're going to be pretty much, you know, Peggy from, you know, the Iron Man movies or, you know, a Power Ranger, you know, in this new special suit. They're, you know, pretty much not even, you know, cyborg assassins anymore. They're basically, you know, I don't even know what, what to call them. Whoops. Oh my God, I need to pay attention here. You know, they're pretty much, you know, suits. I mean, heck, if you wanted to have the whole concept of, you know, power suit, uh, wasn't that literally the whole concept of Jackie Briggs and her character and everything else? Oof, wow. Oh my God, I got cooked. Oh, you know what? Let's go switch to the real Sector, for instance. So, enough babbling about Sector and Cyrex. Let's continue on and touch on the rest of the combat cast. I will admit that at least the idea of Conan and the whole lore of the Conan universe kind of fits into the Mortal Kombat story with sorcerers and priests and everything else and kind of being medieval time. So that at least works. But, you know, I mean, if you wanted to, how easy would it have been to have, you know, Conan literally could have been, you know, Kotal Khan. There we go. Speaking of, let's get some more fatalities coming in here. And the T-1000, like, what, did we suddenly warp back to 1992 in Judgment Day? Like, I mean, most millennials and slash Gen Z, they're not going to know who the heck the T-1000 is. They're not going to care. That could have been any number of people. Could have been Ash from Evil Dead. Why not have, have another, you know, DC villain or, you know, their character from the Injustice series? Why not have, you know, I don't know, let's say, you know, Black Manta, Darkseid, Sinestro, uh, Atrocious. Heck, have Dark Khan from, you know, MK versus DC. I mean, it's just, the whole entire concept of it just completely boggles my mind. And enough of these constant guest characters, like, it's just, it's so overflowing. Is this Mortal Kombat or, you know... You know, oh my god, what the heck do we even call this? Gas combat? I don't know. I don't understand the choices that they're making. And then on top of this, you're literally paying 50 bucks for all this. For six new characters, we don't know yet if they'll all be released on day one or if they're going to be released piecemeal. Whoops. Oh, whoops. A story expansion. Oh, yippee. You can literally just watch the you know, story expansion on YouTube. There we go. Let's do another. Hey, all right. We got another animality here. Honestly, you want to know what I could think I could do with 50 bucks? Take my kids to a really nice pool, get a pizza on the way home. And have an absolutely fantastic time. Or maybe go to the grocery store, like my favorite one that I always prefer to go to. Get a package of 10 hamburgers, package of buns, maybe a bag of charcoal, some fruit. Get some extra groceries. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? 
In my next video, I'm going to break down where I believe this whole new direction kind of actually started. Hope you enjoyed this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.